Hello and namaste everyone, Pratima here and look what's in my hands today. It's the new Samsung Galaxy A73. Among all the phones that Samsung has launched in the mid-range price segment so far, this is the most expensive one you can get. And my team has been using it for a little over three weeks now, so in this video, let me share if it's worth getting over other similarly priced phones such as the iQ9, the OnePlus 9RT, or the new Xiaomi 12X that I've just started testing. So let's get right into it. Okay, starting with the design side of things, this awesome mint color option that I have with me looks stunning. It's also a pretty lightweight for such a big phone and um, if you have big hands, it's quite ergonomic as well. But for folks like me, its large footprint makes single-handed use a bit difficult. Anyway, the best thing about Samsung's A-series phones is that almost all of them come with the IP67 rating against dust and water damage. And trust me, this feature comes in handy quite often. Last week, we went out to a water park and I was carrying the Xiaomi 12X with me, but since the phone does not have any ingress protection, I could not take any photos or videos with it. However, that's no trouble with the Samsung Galaxy A73. Still and all, I wish it had more uh, premium build quality since it's an all-plastic phone, be it on the back panel or the glossy frames. This means that uh, it is subject to scuffs and even discoloration over time if not handled with utmost care. On to the display, it's uh, not news that Samsung makes the best smartphone screens out there and it's the same with the Galaxy A73 as well. Everything from colors, contrast, white balance to brightness levels is excellent on this tall 6.7 inches Super AMOLED Plus display. It is also Wideband L1 and HDR10 certified for high quality streaming on OTT platforms like Netflix. And uh, contrary to last year's Galaxy A72, this one feels a lot smoother as well since it refreshes at 120Hz instead of 90Hz. However, the massive letdown with this screen is that it does not support dynamic refresh rate, which means that it cannot even switch between 60Hz and 120Hz. So it's either the slow 60Hz all times or the power hungry 120Hz all the time. Regardless, Samsung says that this screen has 800 nits of peak brightness, which yeah, does not seem like a lot, but in real world usage, we've had zero trouble looking at it even during these hot summer days in Kathmandu. Uh, here, auto brightness works perfectly fine and it is SGS IKEA certified for low blue light emission too. The Galaxy A73 also includes an optical in-display fingerprint reader, but as compared to the ones from Chinese brands, its unlock speed is still noticeably slower and I had to turn off the animation to get a slightly faster result. Alright, in terms of the audio, you're getting a set of stereo speakers here with Dolby Atmos and I am quite impressed with its sound quality which is balanced and even loud enough to fill an average room. We had no trouble with phone calls or the proximity sensor on this phone either, whereas it supports VOLTE calls and carrier aggregation too. Still, I feel like Samsung has used an inferior Z-axis vibration motor here since the Galaxy A73's haptics feels buzzy instead of fluid and precise. Okay, let's now turn to the performance of this phone and um, this is where you'd find one of the biggest upgrades coming from last year's Galaxy A72. Compared to the Snapdragon 720G, the 778G powering the Galaxy A73 is more powerful, more power efficient and it has 5G support too. We've seen this processor in multiple mid-range phones last year like the Galaxy M32 and the Galaxy A52s and I can confidently say that the Snapdragon 778G is indeed quite a capable and reliable chipset. As a result, the Galaxy A73 has performed decently in our everyday usage, be it in terms of memory management or One UI optimization, everything works well here. And uh, not to forget, Samsung has also pledged four generations of OS and five years of security updates for the Galaxy A73, which is the longest software commitment on a phone of this price range. Okay, when it comes to gaming, the Galaxy A73 lets you enjoy PUBG and Call of Duty at a smooth 60fps without any frame drops or stutters. Call of Duty is 60fps ready at its max graphics settings, but on PUBG, you'll have to lower the option to smooth graphics. 
Plus, high FPS optimized games like Critical Ops achieve a stable 120 FPS here, although we only got like 90 to 100 FPS on Mech Arena and Injustice 2 on average, with further frame drops after 10 to 15 minutes into the game. Another thing that's great here is the thermal system since we've never had a significant heating issue. It's uh, just when playing GPU intensive games like Genshin Impact that the phone gets considerably hot. At both highest and high graphic settings, we were able to get about 30 to 35 FPS on average with the CPU and battery temperatures reaching up to 50 and 40 degrees Celsius respectively. All in all, Galaxy A73's performance is quite reliable, there is no denying that, but considering its price tag, it's simply underpowered. I mean, all the Snapdragon 778G powered phones that are available in the market right now cost way less than this, and you can easily find ones with a much more powerful Snapdragon 888 chip in this arena. So at the very least, I think Samsung should have gone with the new Diamond City 8100 or the excellent Snapdragon 870. Chip here. And like I mentioned earlier, I am currently using the new Xiaomi 12X with the Snapdragon 870, whose everyday performance feels much snappier in comparison, while it also delivers considerably better gaming results. The Galaxy A73 is Samsung's first mid-range phone to equip a 108 megapixel primary camera, that too with OIS. And um, after testing multiple phones at this price segment, what I can tell you is that this camera delivers the most consistent results. Samsung phones are usually known for their oversaturated, punchier photos, but that's not the case here. As you can see, it's colors, white balance, um, dynamic range, exposure levels, and shadow processing look very natural compared to the warm and slightly poppy colors that the Xiaomi 12X produces. I also found the images from the 12X to be low in contrast sometimes. Similarly, I prefer A73's ultra-wide-angle shots more because of its wider field of view and better details. As for portrait, Xiaomi's image processing still struggles with maintaining a proper skin tone. The Galaxy A73, on the other hand, captures portraits with better skin tone, um, colors, details, and dynamic range. All this continues in terms of selfies as well, where the 12X especially fails to handle dynamic range against uh, light in portrait selfies. Regular low-light shots are also relatively brighter and with more details from the Galaxy A73, although it does take a bit hazy photos at times. The Xiaomi 12X improves with regards to dynamic range and details with night mode turned on, but A73's image processing still looks slightly better most of the time. Alright, getting to videos, the 12X lets you record up to 8K 24fps footages while the Galaxy A73 maxes out at 4K 30fps. At this resolution, um, both these phones manage a similar level of stabilization though. But I did notice that the videos from the 12X are distinctly low in contrast while A73 shoots warmer videos. Same thing on 1080p 60fps, although Xiaomi does crop in on the frame for steadier results here. And for OIS stabled videos, you will need to switch to 1080p 30fps on both these phones. Upfront, the Galaxy A73 can shoot up to 4K 30fps selfie videos, whereas the Xiaomi 12X is limited to 1080p 60fps. And as you can see, even though the A73 has a narrower field of view, its dynamic range and exposure control are much better. Lastly, uh, getting to the battery life, we use this phone in 120Hz mode all the time and the screen on time that we were getting was pretty mediocre at about 5.5 to 6 hours only. Plus, on busy days with a lot more gaming, uh, photo shoots and GPS usage, we had to charge the phone twice a day. By the way, you will not find a power brick inside the packaging here, so you will need to buy a 25 watt power delivery charger separately, which costs around $20. We used uh, Samsung's official 25 watt charger, which takes the battery up to 100% in roughly 1 hour and 20 minutes. So, to conclude, the Galaxy A73 is not a bad phone by any means, absolutely not. In fact, its design, display, cameras, and software support are pretty much the best in class. But if you ask me, I think it is slightly overpriced, mostly because of the Snapdragon 778G chipset. And at a similar price, you will find significantly better performing phones like the Xiaomi 12X, um, the iQoo 9, and the Realme GT2. 
What's even worse is that you can get last year's Galaxy A52s which currently retails at a much lower price while offering an extremely similar smartphone experience. Here, apart from a larger battery um, and a 108 megapixel primary camera, the A73 is practically the same as the Galaxy A52s. So you can get the Galaxy A52s instead without losing too much of anything, really. But I think Samsung will eventually drop the price of the Galaxy A73, making it a decent value overall. However, as things stand right now, the Galaxy A52s is a significantly better deal. So there you have it guys, this was our full review of the newly launched Samsung Galaxy A73. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.